Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Reading Smoke with Phil Joes. Looks like uh, we're coming in live on uh, YouTube, so that's always good. It's always uh, a little bit uh, trepidatious for me when I hit the button and then there's five or six seconds before it goes live. So uh, anyway, thanks for being here. Uh, we should have a good time this week. It's a, a pretty short video. This is sort of in the middle of the video here, but I'm going to go back to the beginning. Um, as we're as we're pulling here, thanks. Uh, first, thanks thanks to you for tuning in. Um, I'm in the chat, so if you want to uh, hit something up in the chat, I'll I'll try to respond to it while we're talking here. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, so this is from Brian Bastinelli, and I found it. He's he's got a great site, and I do check his site directly pretty often. Uh, but I found this one through Statter, Dave Statter's website, Statter 911. He's got you know hundreds of videos on there for you. So. Uh, plenty of content out there to think about, do something about. Uh, I want to thank Mike Sturbinski. Hey, when I was talking about this on my SBSK post this week, <clears throat> I was pointing out that as you're, as you're approaching these uh, uh, buildings or in these districts, you can often uh, look at the houses or the buildings that are around them and have some idea of what might be going on. And I mentioned that this might uh, be a fiveplex here because there's five power meters and uh, Mike Sturbinski pointed out to me and uh, I had heard this before but I just forgot it is that uh, at least in some jurisdictions you get you have four one for each unit and then there's one for the building and that would cover things uh, maybe like the um, uh, laundry room or if there's any common areas or something like that right so that might be owners or the uh, or the management company or whoever is responsible for that one. So while well, I said in the video, um, this could be a fiveplex, and I think it could be uh, based on some input from the uh, Facebook post. Um, I'm going to go with Mike, say this is a uh, fourplex, a um, meter for the owner, right? And, and either way, if it was your district, you would know these things, right? And so sort of one of the things I'm, I'm looking at here is that there's this front and then sort of what I would call maybe the original building and then there's add on in the back. And so getting a sense of the structure, the building construction, the era, all the stuff that you know from uh, reading buildings uh, would tell you about the district that you're going to. Right. Right. So as we're looking at these things, so he's going to pull in, the chief's going to pull in here, get that, get that little Nissan out of the way. And we're going to get a nice view. So here we have essentially, right, if we look down this street, and I'm sure Brian knows this just from the address in the, um, Chief Bastinelli knows this from the address in the in his jurisdiction, right, where he's going, knows what the building types are and all that kind of things. But uh, for us, as we're just sort of training our mind's eye to see these things, we want to point out that these other places have the same, like this is the same up front, right, uh, an original sort of building. Uh, with some maybe some add-on in the back or maybe that's just the way they were constructed originally I don't know because I'm not really familiar with this sort of uh, construction didn't have a lot of it in Seattle right this would have been more like a one-off or a two-off rather than a whole neighborhood like this is All right so let's keep going and uh, we're gonna get a good look at the fire now um, notice even this, so all these houses are the same, so I would assume, right, I would assume that this one also has a big piece in the back, um, but that's reading the building right now, we're going to read the smoke, and very often when we talk about reading smoke, uh, one of the things that is just an impediment to being good at it is that your eye is first drawn to light and motion, and there's plenty of light and motion right here. Right? And no matter who you are, no matter how often you do this, your eye is just going to be drawn to this fire initially. But the reason that, I mean, that's the way your eye is designed. So the reason you want to get off that quickly is this is not really telling you anything you don't know. This room, right, this area right here, there's flames coming out here, there's flames coming out here. Um, there's nothing that you don't know about the survivability of this space right now. Everything is going to tell you, you can tell instantaneously. What we want to do is to inventory the attributes of smoke and start looking at some of these other factors, right? So there's people coming out of this one. Don't know if there's people coming out of this one, but a fourplex, I, my presumption is it's an over-under, it's a side-by-side -side and an over-under, right? So one unit here, one unit here. So one, two, three, four. 
Um, and I'm not sure how you would number these. Uh, that's sort of the way I would number them. Um, but uh, we really have the floor two, right? Alpha, Bravo, corner. That's a, a universal way to talk about it. Uh, and it's on fire. The thing that we're seeing though is even if we, as we take this inventory and we're only seeing one side of the building and it's ab absolutely important to get uh, a vision of more sides. It's, the chief was able to see the Delta side as uh, he arrived here, but this is our view here. So what we're looking at is the other, the other attributes of smoke. And when we look at that, we look at these three units, right? These bottom two units got nothing going on, nothing in the windows, nothing from the eaves, no indication when they opened this door, there was no smoke coming out, right? Which is what we would expect to see since this is below, both below the fire and a separate occupancy. So let's focus our attention over here onto the um, floor two delta half of the building, right? And we can see pretty significant smoke actually pour, coming out cracks and seams around these windows. But the thing we want to take note of, just as we're looking at these windows, is even those coming out around the cracks and seams, the windows themselves are basically clear, right? There's no sweating, there's no soot buildup, the curtains you can still see very, very clearly, all those sorts of things. All three of these windows are basically clear it's a snowy day, so I'm pretty sure they're closed, right? Um, it, but uh, that tells us that the the, the fire uh, protection, right, the, um, the stud wall in between here, the sheetrock, that stuff is holding very, very well at this time. The fire has enough pressure, it's pushing either uh, behind the side, through some of the electrical and stuff like that. It is getting to these windows, right, from the cracks and seams, but not on the inside. So if I was to project, right, if I was uh, to project what the conditions are like up there, would I expect to see smoke? Yes. Would it, it would be uh, low, thin, uh, probably in the, in the middle side of the grayscale and probably stratified up in the top foot or two feet of the spaces. The, this, this up here would be a little more significant than down here, but good overall good visibility. Um, and a, a, some but not an immediate life threat to the people who are inside there, right? Because the, the smoke's gonna be stratified and be relatively high in that space. Significant, um, uh, higher volume velocity density color coming out of the, uh, the next thing, right, is the cracks and seams of the attic uh, space or the, this, this is more than likely just the triangle spaces, right? Um, not really a, a full attic, but just a, a small piece of overhead up here, but there's definitely higher volume, like pretty significant volume, I'd even say high volume, turbulent, thick and black coming out of some of these spaces over here, right? Um, in the moderate, maybe not super thick, but in the moderate zone, but all black and getting worse uh, progressively, right? So right off the bat, uh, we have a pretty good understanding of, of the four units, right? The one that's in the most jeopardy is clearly this one, number two here. And then these down here, um, I would say really low risk down here. Uh, people are going to be able to, uh, these are survivable spaces and will be for a very, very long time. Longer than it's going to take us to do something about this. Sort of the over under is this one here. And, um, this is where we get into, depending on your organization, if you have a very small organization, uh, low turnout, you know, you're only getting 10, 12 people, this is probably a second alarm right off the bat. If you're in a large organization that has three or four person staffing and you're getting 20 to 30 to 40 people um, coming, uh, um, the fact that the fire is only on this side and has not extended to here probably keeps it, at least initially, um, on the edge of being a, a first alarm response. If, if, I, if I come to this in Seattle with roughly 40 people showing up, five engines, two trucks, etc., cetera, um, I probably give them an opportunity and I keep an eye on this over here. But if the fire had already extended, if I had signs in these windows that this fire had extended over here, I'd have to consider this actually two separate building fires, right? Even though it's one big building, because of the separation that should be in here, Think about two buildings, two fires, two alarms, right? That's a, a kind of a simple way that I think about things. Um, 
when I'm doing this. So we look at, as you pull in, we're looking at building construction. We have your understanding of uh, what this district is, where you're going, because you are um, looking at that in your response area to understand what's going on in these buildings. I'm sure that, uh, you know, even a one-year firefighter has a pretty significant understanding of this building construction, probably um, how these layouts work uh, better than I do just because I, I haven't been to a lot of them, right? And that's all right. I could learn quick. Uh, and then the Chief's going to get out. This is a great video. If you go to the link, it's in the show notes. Uh, gets out, makes the 360, the rigs pull in, they fight fire. I mean, there's a, there's a lot going on. There's a lot more to learn in this video. Uh, but we, if we look at just from the arrival and how quickly we can look at these windows up here and go, um, hey, man, that's clear. It hasn't extended yet. Uh, we're concentrated here. Um, and I feel confident that we can spend a lot of resources over here to handle this problem before we start worrying about evacuating this. If this had significant um, smoke inside the windows and stuff, it's a little choppy. Let me see if I can fix that. Um, well, it's just going to be choppy right now. I don't know why it does that, but it doesn't matter. If I saw already a significant problem up here, uh, it'd probably be worth getting some folks up there right away to get the searches done. The, the fire extension risk is minimal, but the smoke, uh, if, if I was already getting these black, if these windows were blacked out or sweating or whatever, the risk of fire extension is still low, but the risk to civilians would be very, very high over there. Um, as it is, that there is risk here. I think it's more in the moderate zone. So I want to focus here with this being a necessary of uh, the secondary tactical objective, at least with the amount of resources that I would typically get um, when I was a incident commander, right? Uh, so, hey, this week I'm going to be in Missouri at the Missouri Fire School in Columbia, Missouri. Looking forward to that. Uh, Mizzou is a great campus, uh, great people there. If you're a regular uh, watcher of the YouTube or the SBSK and, you, and you're at the, at the Mizzou show, please say hello. I love meeting fans, uh, subscribers, whatever. I uh, really do appreciate you guys uh, and gals being out there. And uh, so for this episode, right, of Reading Smoke with Phil Jose, I'm Phil Jose, and I'm out. Thanks.